Hey, Spencer. Yeah. Do you miss school? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bummer. I don't miss, like, being in school. I miss college. You know, that time was super cool for me, so. Let's dive into that. Hey friends, welcome back to the podcast where we talk about tools and tactics to improve your life. Uh, this is the beautiful mess where we start things messy, where we experience life in the way that life happens, which is both order and chaos and everywhere in between. Uh, I'm here with my good friend, Spencer Pugh. I'm Paul. We welcome you along on this journey. Uh, today, I want to give you a quick update on our stats for the podcast. So in Anchor, uh, I'm seeing basically we have 35 plays of our most recent episode. And our original episode, we have about 62. So a total of 97 plays uh, from starting this podcast. Uh, so we're, we're super excited. I mean, hey, baby steps. You yeah. Know? Thank you all. Yeah. We're super, yeah. super excited that uh, you found some amount of interest in in this podcast and what we're doing. So that's cool. That's good to, good to hear and good to have you guys for sure. Absolutely. And we have a new country. We Ooh. have Puerto Rico. Welcome. Welcome, Puerto Rico. Yes. Yes. Super excited to have you on the journey. So today, Spencer, what, what are we talking about? Today, we're talking about school. And I guess... I guess specifically higher education, so like after high school level. But do you need to go to college? I guess is kind of the the question of the episode. And then just learning in general and how we how we continue to do so. Or for some of you, how you've you were just done with school when you were done and cruising through life. So that's the idea for today. I love it. I love it. And to me, I feel like there's a lot of opportunities for people to learn outside of school because mm -hmm. of technology and the expansion of YouTube University, as I'll call it. And to be honest, there's so many podcasts out there as well that you can learn from or audiobooks, books. So there's just a wealth of knowledge readily available or that you have your online courses, you have now this cohort based learning that's become a new mm. thing where people go online and they take courses with a group of people at the same time. So we're going to dive into a lot of that and ex kind of explore our experiences with college, whether it was worth it and why you should consider or maybe not consider going to school Sure. for further education or just starting out. Should someone go to college? What do you think? Whew. Yes. Yes. And no. Uh, I think you have to go for the right reasons because many times I think people go to school thinking that it's it's just like another step that they have to take. Mm. And I don't think that's any like any longer the case. Like it's not, it doesn't have to be that rite of passage. And I think for some people, they don't need it. It's not very important to what they do. Uh, I think it was very formative for me as a person uh, going through school because of the like the relationships that you build during that time. It, it's it's honestly, I, I remember a professor talking about this, how it's actually a lot of like the interactions that happen outside of class uh, that really matter. Granted, like I learned a lot of great things during like my education. I got a liberal arts degree, so not your typical, you know, I'm going to learn this information to do a job. I mean, granted, I did, my degree was in music. Uh, and so I did end up doing music. However, what I learned in school didn't necessarily help me mm -hmm. in the end result. Like it wasn't very like practical where like I could see, oh, because I learned this, I'm so much better at doing my job. Sure. I, I think I'm in the same boat. I was more aligned with what I'm doing now in, in school. I went for, man, it's, it's long story short, I had a band in college. And so I literally freshman year said, I want to really try and, and be in this band. And so what is one of the easiest majors uh, <laughs> to take where I'm not having to study too much so I can go do these shows and write songs and practice with the band. And it's so bad to say that my parents helped me out so much with school. Um, and I'm fortunate for that, but that that's, that's what I did. And luckily I took the communication studies route 
uh, which sort of, you know, it, it has helped me a little bit in my marketing field now. But um, I'm curious to ask you, if you if you could go back, I guess, would you take a different like major? I, I would definitely take a different approach. I mean, I guess with the liberal arts situation, like we had, you know, certain courses that you had to take. Yeah. However, I think in this day and age, like it would be nice for people to be allowed to just select what they want to take because I think there's so many instances where you end up taking a class just because it's required or there's like, you know, these prerequisites and you end up taking it and you don't end up getting much out of that class or perhaps it's a teacher that you don't jive well with, which I'm a, I'm a firm believer. If you find a great teacher and they're very influential in uh, helping you learn things, I, I think it's very important to like seek after those people. I, I nearly actually got a classics minor or a, like a minor in Latin of all things uh, because of a professor. Like I was basically pr like getting a degree in this professor like or, or a minor in this professor because he was so good at what he did. So you can find things like that where you find someone that's has a lot of wealth of knowledge uh, that you can kind of learn from. And so like I think that's like something to keep in mind is like, what do you want to get out of school? Yeah, like, I think that's important for you to ask going into it. Yeah. And I think I don't remember where I heard this, but it, it stuck with me. And it's kind of like to answer the question directly, should you go to college? Should your kids go to college? Um, like as I think, you know, as my daughter Lena grows up <clears throat> and is getting ready to graduate high school, should she go to college? And I think the way I look at it now is if Lena at 17, 18 knows what she wants to do, like has a huge passion in her heart to do something. Like for instance, Maria wanted to be a teacher, just set on it, had wanted to do it for years and years, loved children. So like for her, college is the best path to give her what she needs and to give her the degree so that she can teach. The problem is I think at that age, at 17, I didn't know what I wanted to do. In fact, I thought maybe I wanted to do physical therapy. So when I went to college, I was HNFE, which is human nutrition, foods and exercise. And I was taking all these science courses and I hate science. And so I was like, what am I, what am I doing? Why am I, why did, so like, I think at that age, some people might be set on what they want to do with their life. I think for a lot of people, they don't know. And so then it's a matter of, you know, like we just said, college is much more than the courses you take. It's the experience. It's learning skills on how to communicate with new people that you've never met before. There's a lot that you learn in that environment full of other kids who are trying to figure out their career. And so I think in that aspect, college makes a lot of sense. Now you have the question of community college or a university or, you know, out of state, in state. So I think it's online. Online, right. So yeah. uh, there's a lot of choices. I don't think the answer is very, you shouldn't go to college or you should go to college. It is more of where are you at in your life? Do you have your mind set on something or not? And I think if you don't have your mind set on something, I would explore college just because like I realized near the end of my college career, I was still doing the band and stuff that like I enjoyed creating content and I enjoyed marketing the band. And so like I was able to kind of discover the field I thought I might want to go into in college. So that's that's the way I look at it. So if Lena comes to me at 17 and says, you know, here's the flip side. I'm kind of rambling a little bit. But if Lena says I want to be a YouTuber, right? That's scary. But <laughs> if she says that, I would like to know like, okay, well, what's your plan for the next four years when you would be in college? How are you going to become a YouTuber in four years? And I think it's going to be a certain amount of like, is she putting in the work? Has she been putting in the work to grow and gain those skills? Because I, I would hate for her to say like, yeah, I want to be a YouTuber. And I'm like, cool, that's great. Yeah, pursue that. And then like, she sits around and doesn't do anything about it or doesn't try very hard because then it's kind of on me. You know, I was the parent and I was like, you have an idea, pursue that. And if she hasn't shown that she's actually like really passionate and willing to put in that work. So that's a silly example, but, and I think it's something, you know, we'll, we'll face when we get there, but that's the way I look at college. You know, if she shows she's willing to put in the work to become this thing outside of college, then great. I will help you as much as I can. But if it's more of just like a pipe dream or like I would like to do this, 
that's kind of a different story. We might be like, let's go to college and you can do that in your free time kind of thing. So, whew. Per usual, yeah, I yeah. just talk for eight minutes straight. Hey, gold, gold nuggets, gold nuggets. Got to, got to pick them up when you can. So, um, basically, like I, I think about this, you know, there's a lot of people that dropped out of school that are geniuses. I mean, maybe they're the exception for it. Like, I mean, you got people like Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg. You know, these people that are brilliant, and I think they just realized that they were too smart for school or they just mm. realized that it was like almost a waste of time for them because right. they they just knew what they wanted to do they just like had a vision and they they kind of went for it or they just like kind of sampled uh i think steve jobs was really interesting i think he, he took like a what was it like a almost like a calligraphy class or something like that which ended up being very helpful when he was kind of looking at creating computer fonts like mm. it's amazing how and i guess that's another thing to keep in mind is like something that you take today whether it's underwater basket weaving or whatever it is, you know, might be applicable later on in life. Yeah. You just don't know how you're going to use it. Uh, and I think it goes back to this idea of overlap, which you were kind of alluding to in this idea of like, you know, your daughter wants to become a YouTuber. I guess like it goes back to that idea of like, you want to set someone up for success. You right. don't want them to burn out on their passion just because they want to do something. I don't know if it's always a good thing. Sure. Um, but the other thing that I guess like as a question is like, are there certain elements of college that you feel like, I don't know, in courses or where it's just like you feel like you're not learning or it's just like you are learning for the sake of taking a test, not for the sake of learning? Yeah. And I think to me, that's like one of the things I don't like about most traditional schools is that they basically teach you how to take a test, mm -hmm. not to learn for life. And I think definitely, like like we were saying, like when you go into college, you have credits and stuff that you've earned in high school. And if you don't have enough, then you have to retake things or maybe you can skip a class. You have the, what are they called? Like your your base level studies? Uh, electives or like you, you have your like requisites and then you have your electives, like things that you can choose to take. Is that what you... No, I'm saying like I had to take a chemistry class even though I had switched into a communication major. Oh, the, like the core curriculum. Yeah, I, I think like... That for me, freshman year, and I think I was in some of sophomore year, it was very much that. It was like, I have to take, like, this literally, I don't care about math anymore. I don't care about chemistry anymore, but I have to take these, right? And I think that was very much true um, to that, like, learn the material so you can take the test and pass, and then you can forget about it forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I also think, like, I don't know, I think it has a lot to do with, like, the structure of university, and, and you know, there's there's a reason it's been done that way, obviously. But like, I remember like the whole like credit system, right? I remember a, a popular thing to do for people at my school was to like Google what are the easiest classes, you know, because you you can like get a credit and not it does like you're just getting the credit. And I'll be honest with you, I took a class in college. It was industrial design and I was interested in that. But we went to the first class. And we went to the next class. Me and my buddy took it together. The professor, all he did was he had a projector and he would show us things that he had found on his travels and talk about some industrial design. And then he would pass them around the class. And that was every class. Uh, no tests. He didn't take attendance. And after a while, we were like, we don't need to be here. <laughs> so we stopped going to that class until the end of near the end of the semester and we went back in and somebody was like, hey, uh, so like the end of term exam, like what's that going to look like? And he was like, I just I don't really think that we should do anything. I'm not prepared. And so zero attendance scores, zero grade scores and no exam at the end. So we were like, so, so, so like, we don't have to do anything. He's like, I just, everyone's been great. I'll just give everyone an A. And it was just like, literally, I could have signed up for this class and never showed up and gotten the credit. And I think like that says a lot. <laughs> I went to a great university and that still exists there. And so I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure, you know, like what you're saying, like, I know there's things that, little facts and figures or nuggets that I learned in classes that didn't even pertain to my major that I still think about or still use. So I don't know where I'm going with this. It's just like, I don't know. 
It's like the the professor checked out before the students did. Yeah, he was kind of wacky. So I guess for me, one of like the I guess I don't know if on the the trail of what you're talking about is like I really disliked professors that would read you their slides. <laughs> yeah. Like basically, they would have this PowerPoint. And it had so much text on it that yeah. it just felt like you could have sent me the slides and I would have gotten just as much out of the class as sitting here right now. So, yeah. I don't know. That was a huge tangent. I just remember last night when I was thinking about this episode, I was like, dude, I got to tell that story. Because it was like, <laughs> it was absurd to me. Like this higher education place where, I don't know, I got credit for not showing up. Do you regret going to college, Paul? Whew. I guess... I've thought about it sometimes where I would have done a different path, maybe. I would have studied something different. Basically, I had a very fortunate situation where I got paid to go to school. Cool. Um, my dad was working, still works for this university. And so, like, for me, I grew up around this university and it was a great, a great education. But sometimes I think, like, if I were to choose a school, I might have studied something different. I think at the time I was just choosing the the major that I would feel like I would get the most out of uh, mm. or was the most enriching. And so um, I kind of fell into that path. And and it was it was a very, you know, the music, as most music majors know, like, I don't know, you're kind of in this bubble um, <laughs> that most other people don't experience. I'm, I'm sure there's other majors like this, but it's it's like you have your own little music family. Yeah. Um, so it was it was a good experience. But there are times that I felt like because the music major is usually very intensive. I think, I guess, something to keep in mind if you're planning to go to school is like, make sure you're getting what you want out of it. Because I felt like in the end, I probably spent, this is weird to say, too much time like studying or being worried about my grades hmm. and like, you know, stressing over that instead of like, you know, having a balanced life of just like, doing the studies, but also having a social life. And sure. I mean, I, I, I did have a social life. I wasn't completely off, you know, <laughs> in, a, in a like closet in a law in the library hiding yeah. out. But I, I think I could have had more of that element. Yeah, that's a good point. And yeah, different majors are different. You're right. Like some majors are very like I'm with the people in my major and I don't talk to anyone else kind of thing. And I, I do know even at even at Virginia Tech where I went to school, like the, the music majors, that was like a really difficult major. And even like like uh, visual arts majors, like, I don't know, it was crazy. Um, but that's a good point. I think I, on the flip side, I was very much, obviously I cared about my grades, but I also, again, I had the band and that was my main focus. I don't know, everybody's story is different too, you know? And I, I, my, I was very fortunate to, my parents paid for half my school loans. So I still have beyond a $17,000 in, in student debt. Uh, student loan debt. Um, but I guess I made a, I, I, as I was typing this up last night and thinking through it, like, I don't know that you can put a price on the opportunities and the experiences. In a way, I feel like even though I wasn't in the right major specifically, and I didn't learn a lot in school, I mean, the relationships I built, the fact that I started a band and started to create content and fell in love with all of that, I don't know that that would have happened outside of college. So I think $17,000, sure. Like, I, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to to say whether or not I regret doing it because I do have such fond memories. And I think for some people going to school, like maybe if they went to a university where people were very much a shut in. I, I, it depends on the school too. Like they may have had a terrible experience in college. And so it's not worth the student <laughs> loans, you know, or they had a terrible time there. They felt they didn't get a good education. They're in a completely different field than what they went to school for. Like I can understand how some people could have a really bad taste in their mouth for the school and student loans and really do regret it. It's hard. Again, it's just, it's a hard topic to say yes or no. Should you go? Should you not go? But I don't know. It seems like you and I both had an okay experience with yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think like, again, like you were saying, it's, it's important to know why you're doing it. Because if you're just doing it to get a piece of paper, yes, it does mean something like you can go do a lot more with a piece of paper, but like maybe spend more time thinking about why you want to get that piece of paper. Obviously, if you want to be like a surgeon, I hope you get the 
credentials <laughs> to do surgery. I, yeah. I, I don't want someone that looked it up on YouTube 30 minutes before the surgery and said like, I'm qualified. Yeah. I, uh, I just looked it up on YouTube. We're, we're good. We're good. So I, I think it depends on the field that you want to go into and what you want to get out of your education. For sure. Next, we can talk about basically, you know, how can we continue learning once we're out of school? Are there like certain things that we should be looking at or because I think it's so important because our mind is like a muscle. Mm. I've been reading this book, uh, Limitless by Jim Quick, and he talks about how your memory, your recall, it's, it's a muscle. So people that say like, oh, I have a bad memory. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have a bad memory. It's more like they haven't trained their minds. And I, I feel like it's very important to be a continual learner, not just one that once you check off the box of school, you're you're done. You're going to mm -hmm. never think to learn again. So what, yeah. what, what do you think? What would you recommend someone if they're looking for ways to continue learning? Well, first, I guess I would say to a lot of people are different. Um, I think there are some people, probably a lot of people who are, they went to school, they put in the time, they learned what they needed to, and now they're working their job nine to five. They're happy that with that, they come home and spend time with their family. And I think for some people, that's fine. Like I can tell you someone here that I work with just doesn't, doesn't really want to like further themselves in their career. They just, they like coming, punching the clock, doing their work, they get fulfillment in that. And then they spend time, you know, with their family or out with friends. So I think for some people that's fine, you know, um, they spend their free time, you know, like I said, with family or just being entertained by something. And I, I think in a sense, you're learning still, you know, you're learning how to have better communication with your family, things like that. But I think in the field that we're in, and for anyone who is wanting something more than where they're at, whether they went to school or whether they didn't, uh, whether they're in a big corporate company or a small startup or they have their own business, like I think it's very important for these types of people to continue to learn. And there are obviously ways of going back to school school, you know, if that's a route you want to take or as sort of what we do, this idea of self-improvement or, you know, there are plenty of free resources. You know, you can go to college again or go back to school or get your master's or PhD or whatever. But in terms of, you know, if I think specifically, if you're if you've found the field that you really enjoy, there are plenty of free resources for getting better in that field, whether it's YouTube, like you're saying, audiobooks, there's thousands of billions of millions. There's uh, podcasts are a great resource. Um, like you're saying, just flexing that muscle. Uh, your brain muscle, your memory to recall information and, and just, and it, it, it doesn't, I felt like in school, I didn't do well with the whole learn, sit down and take a test, like studying and stuff. But now that I've left school, learning is like my favorite thing. And it's weird, like just learning new information, new tips and tricks, like it's so much fun for me. So, so yeah, I, I would recommend anyone who's looking to further themselves in their career or make more money over time or, you know, I don't even know, looking for a career change. There's just plenty of free resources of people who have gone before you in your field who you can listen to and take on as a mentor, even if you don't actually know them. You know what I mean? So that's, that's how I feel. What other resources yeah. can you think of as well? I mean, there are paid versions too, like uh, something we'll talk about this, this idea of like online courses. There's people who have gone before you, maybe even in YouTube or a field that's kind of new to society, who at least they're a year or two ahead of you, who can say, don't take these steps, take these steps or learn from these mistakes kind of thing. So love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And to add on to that, I think with technology, there's a lot of, I mean, as you said, there's a vast amount of knowledge. I think the, the big part is kind of curating that for yourself mm. and understanding how you can use this information and not just because like we get an information overload. So I think it's sure. important to kind of curate what you're learning. I think about this idea of cohorts versus MOOCs. They call them MOOCs. Basically, it's massive open online courses. 
And so massive online course, open online courses is basically where you can register for a class online and you can take it at your own pace. You can watch the videos, maybe answer quizzes. Whereas cohorts, you have a group of people and you're learning together at the same time. Uh, I think that, especially after, you know, the pandemic, we've seen so much, you know, content being distributed. But I think to have that sense of community that you're working together with something, uh, like working together towards a goal, I think is very uh, encouraging. I guess personally, I kind of had something like that. And I mean, we ca- talked about it last episode with the overlap idea uh, where you have like a mentor or somebody that can guide you. Uh, maybe they found resources that they can share with you. I definitely had one of those people who kind of laid out like a a document full of like books, Hmm. uh, YouTube videos, you know, all these resources that I could just like cherry pick and, you know, learn from. And that to me was a a huge help because it kind of gave me like a guide to go through it. Yeah, I think that's a very good point because I think something you may run into if you're just trying to learn on your own is... There, there is a lot out there and it's like, what, what would be my best use of my time? You know, and I think without having someone who knows or at least has way more experience to tell you like, don't spend your time doing this. It's great. It's probably good to know, but like take this path, not this path. Obviously it's all up to the individual, but I mean, that's something even I'm running into here being the CMO of this company is. I feel like I'm adequate, you know, here at the company. We're all very young, but I, it's very cool when we get in a meeting with maybe an outside source, like we had a meeting with um, an agency in Texas who does ads. For them to tell us what's right and wrong is so, it's like a breath of fresh air because we're trying to figure it out. They have it figured out. So, Yeah. um, yeah, I think that's something I'm going to look more and more into. And I think that's the, that's the advantage of having a mentor or someone who is in your field, who has already done it is they can say like, these are the things you need to focus on instead of just trying to intuitively think what's most important as an individual, which I think that's probably a big flaw of mine is like, I, this makes sense to me. Like I can figure it out. So yeah, that's a good point. And I think the MOOCs, the idea of having others experiencing that too. You have these different viewpoints of people at your same level too, aiding in, you know, what might be most important. And who knows? I think it's cool too with those because since you're all learning the same kind of stuff, you have the ability to maybe start like a new project. You know, you might have gone into this course thinking, I'm going to learn how to take photos better. But then you find someone who literally lives down the street who's also taking the course and you guys could start a photography company together, you know? So there's certain advantages to that too, which is super cool. Or just meet friends who want to talk about the same kind of stuff you do, you know? I love yeah. that. I love that. So MOOCs are like where you can take it on your own pace. Oh. Cohort-based learning is like where you learn with Sorry. like other people at the same... I mean, you, you got it. You got it's it. It's a new term You're learning. Me. I'm learning, you know? But yeah, no, I, I think this is like a great thing is that the idea of like learning together. Pat Flynn talks about this because he offers both MOOCs and cohort-based learning. I think he kind of more more or less recently started doing cohort-based. And what he found was oftentimes people, like some people that would sign up for these MOOCs of his on the same topic would end up signing up for this cohort-based learning because Mm. they didn't end up taking the course seriously or they didn't like you know, get Mm. the most out of these courses. And what they found is that, you know, when you pay for something or like you make the investment of saying yes to this course, uh, you're more likely to follow up with it versus those that oftentimes, like, for example, Skillshare, I I got a, you know, subscript, a trial of Skillshare at one point. And I did watch maybe a handful of like videos and and like a course or two. And Mm -hmm. uh, it was great. But like, you know, I, I felt like I was wasting it to some degree because I, I wasn't using it all the time. Um, right. But I think if I had a community that was meeting at a certain time, certain place, I would feel more like I'd miss out yeah. if I didn't come. The whole accountability kind of thing. Same thing with working yeah. out with a group of people versus you going to the gym on your own. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And it's so funny. It's 
it's it's it's a new concept, but it's not a new concept. It's when you take a class in college with ten other people, twenty other people. It's the same, it's the same thing, right? Like, I, I think because you're all in a field you're interested in, it's a little. You probably get a lot more out of it than you know sitting in a chemistry class, knowing you just have to get a grade. Like you're not, you're probably not going to seek others out to help you. Maybe if you're, you know, that type of person, but especially in college with those types of courses, I would just keep to myself and try to study and get the grade on my own. But yeah, I don't know. There's also a certain amount, like the accountability, like it's fun. You know, you're all talking about the same, like you're all passionate about the same subject. Like there are other like-minded individuals, which is super cool. So I don't know. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have down here, should you sell an online mm. course? I'm, I'm curious about uh, your input on should you sell a course? Have you ever sold a course? No, I haven't. It's something we might be working on here at Agenicare. Um, I won't tell you much more than that, but I have this weird, I think there are advantages to online courses. I mean, we've talked very highly about them um, on this episode. But I also think there's a certain amount of, I don't know that any information is necessarily new and private anymore. I think the an online course gives you a streamlined way of approaching something, but you could technically find that same information for free across the internet. It's just a matter of piecing it together for yourself. And you might even find free online courses that give you just as much value. I think, again, the value in an online course is maybe you followed a creator, like Matt Diavella has an online course, as an example. I enjoy the way he does videos. So I might take his course because I want to emulate that, you know, so I would pay for that. In terms of just actually just starting a YouTube channel, there's plenty of free resources out there. And so it's kind of funny to me that someone would say like, hey, I've got all this really like groundbreaking information on how to start a YouTube channel as an example, uh, but you got to pay to get this information. And it's a, it's a tricky game, especially if you're the one creating that course, because you don't want people to join and say like, I already know all this, or like I could have learned this watching other videos for free, you know? So I don't, it's a big, a big amount of an online course is marketing, it's exclusivity, it's, and I think too what we see, especially with these cohorts, is that's an asset that you're offering with the online course too that adds the value. So yeah, you might find this information elsewhere, but if you sign up with us, you get this community and they're gonna help you and it's gonna be engaging. So I don't know, that's why I put that, should you sell the online course? I don't think any information is private this, these days in terms of learning. I think it can all be found. It's just a matter of how you package it and yeah. you know sell it to people. And if you're really trying to help and not just make a dollar. So I don't know. What do, what do you think? What do you think? I, I loved, I mean, it was kind of going back to this idea of like, if you connect with a certain way of like a style of somebody, like that's a, a unique way of mm -hmm. learning because they obviously as a human, they have their own way that they learned it. They have their own way that they, you know, do what they're like teaching. For example, I mean, you brought up Matt Diavella. He probably teaches his YouTube course different than Ali Abdal, mm -hmm. um, who also has like a cohort based. I mean, I don't know if uh, Matt's cohort based or not, um, but I know Ali's is and like they're two fantastic YouTubers, yeah. but I'm sure, you know, maybe your learning styles more like Matt Diavella or Ollie's. And mm -hmm. so you can choose one that's going to resonate more with you. I think that's, that's important. Like the same thing with teachers. Like if you go to school and there's a certain professor that's just brilliant mm -hmm. and you just learn so much from them, I would suggest seeking out courses with that. There's so many people that ended up in a different major because of a professor. Yeah, for sure. And I think to, uh, it's something to be wary of as we bring this up. I think it's possible that someone could buy Matt's course and then they could go and buy Ollie's course and they can go and buy this person's course looking for some sort of like perfect way of doing it. And I, 
this whole podcast is based on starting messy, the beautiful mess. I would rather you take one course and just freaking go for it. I mean, you can buy as many courses as you want. Like, I think it would be probably be pretty entertaining and you could probably get bits and pieces, but don't, don't allow paid courses or free material stop you from getting started on something. Um, I think it, it might feel like, and I'm sure these courses tell you this too, like, don't, don't try to be so perfect that you never know you never start. And we're, I feel like we're always going to be saying that. So, oh man, that, that was some gold dropping right there. The cha-ching, cha-ching. I mean, that, that's, yeah, that's what it's all about is like, once you learn enough to get started. And in fact, maybe sometimes it's better to even start like as you're learning yeah. because you're going to make those mistakes and be okay being a beginner. Just like, just get started. Just yeah. like get and messy. You, just, no matter how yeah. well prepped you are, you're going to make mistakes. Like that's just <laughs> inevitable. So be, you know, don't let that stop you. That's just going to happen. It's part of it. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm starting out with CrossFit. I am like a noob when it comes to CrossFit. And so like you, you go to the gym and like you see these people that are super, you know, into CrossFit and it's just like, wow. But you have to realize they started, you know, square one at one point. So, you know, if they can do it, I can do it too. And I'm just sure. going to take those baby steps, you know, just show up, you know, just put in the reps. Yeah. Cool. That's all we had. I, I feel like that's a takeaway just right there. I, yeah, I, that's what I was, I was going to say. <laughs> like we, we, you know, we, we want to give you takeaways at the end, but I, I think that was the goal. Just start messy. Just like, you know, find maybe there's one thing that you can select that's going to be the Kickstarter for your next whatever it is that you're trying to use that information for. Mm. Um, just try to find a way that you can actually apply it instead of just taking a bunch of courses like learning a lot about a topic like if you're if you're interested in starting something as a result of learning um i i highly recommend just like finding a resource finding a mentor finding someone that's going to guide you that through that process and then just get started yeah i love it um in summation go to college don't go to college uh, it's just a lot of you know where you are in life you know uh whatever whatever is going to in your mind and maybe, you know, finding someone to help you with this decision as well, but what's going to get you to where you're trying to go? It might be college, it might not be. I would encourage anyone and everyone, I don't care if you love going nine to five job and not furthering your career, continue to learn. Like it's just, whether it's like how to eat healthier or how to have better conversations with your kids, like we can always be improving and becoming better humans to help others. So, um, I would say everyone should continue learning in whatever capacity that might be. So what else you got, Paul? I, I love it. I love it. I mean, I, I think I think we do the mic drop. Yeah. Let's drop the mic Let's... then. I can't because we... mine's on a boom arm, but. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Pretend mic drop. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for being here in the beautiful mess we're so glad that you're joining us on this messy journey um we started this podcast messy and we aim to continue living life to the full as we journey through this uh you know the again the order versus chaos and everywhere in between um so we we invite you along on that journey and please if you wouldn't mind subscribe what is it rate review Review. Thank yep. you. Thank you. I, I think I should give you that that job because I, I always that. like I, I'm not used to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and on, if you're, you know, watch it on YouTube, subscribe there too. bell notification, like the video. It helps us out. So, um, yeah, wherever you want to follow us, you know, we, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. So love it. Until next time. Stay messy. Episode four in the bag. In the bag. That was fun.